Welcome back to the pod. Here's what's coming up in today's episodes. Last week we spoke about Victoria Beckham and David Beckham kicking somebody yeah, out. Mm-hmm. Well, not actually kicking them out, requesting that they don't have their ways on a specific day. Yes, and when he goes, something felt a bit strange, but put it down to being in a foreign toilet. Turns out I shat in the... These you tackles. fed a fish soup. They were, they were an emotional crutch for me. Girls, you fed them another they animal. No, it wasn't great. Hello. <laughs> Hello. I'm in a wee bit of a um, post-concert ears are still ringing a bit calm down oh my god I feel like you should have your wee um, wristband on like I've been at I've been at a gig yeah I did that with Tina Park I had that on for like years longer (laughs) than what I'd like to admit yeah that that was a thing wasn't it people and dad let me go away myself for the weekend and I'm still in high school I'm so that's basically what that said it wasn't I've seen x amount of bands it was I got independence Uh for three days and people would have them all stacked up as well. Yeah, people would have like numerous ones, like years and years of them. And all you on could do with that, you could actually go one, two, three, four times three days that you consecutively did not wash for. Yeah. That we can guarantee you're basically admitting that you've had 12 days of being completely unwashed. Bogging. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's the bogging. worst time. I pissed in my tent when I was at so Tina Park. I. What? It had an outside bit. This is why it's not for me. Yeah. Not for me. It's fucking not, nuts. That's not but amazing. Olivia Rodrigo. I was going to say oh, oh, Rodriguez. Rodrigo. She right. was amazing. Amazing. Can I honestly say she's probably the most beautiful person I've ever seen in real life? She is. I was like she? 21. Oh, I was looking wow. at going, this could never be me now in my life because I am a whole 10 years older than you. Yeah. It mm-hmm. was honestly heartbreaking, but also. 11? Pardon? Lauren's like, I'll keep you right. It's 11, actually. Not, not yet. Not yet. It's 11. Close to it. Felt it's 10. But also, the other thing I was going to say was, see, when I went to that, I was watching her going, she's absolutely perfect in every way. Like, her whole personality and everything, she's just got a really good way about her. She's good fun. She's hot. She's just got a bit of a... She's super of, confident, Yeah, confident, she? but not in a cocky way. She's quite yep. relatable. Like, I can imagine why... I can see why all the girls her age group are like, that's who I want to be like. Yeah. Yeah. But I went there with excitement and left with low self confidence. Oh, honestly, no. Because you go, well, I will never be like that. She's just unreal. Yeah, yeah but she's know. 21. I always think Courtney Kardashian uh-huh. now, compared to what she was like when she was like 20, has a completely different life. She turned you it never know. Yeah. You might be on that stage. Give it 10 years. That might be you. I you might be doing vocal. You might be doing Olivia Rodrigo. Like, that's um, the only tribute. thing that I've got wrong. <laughs> <laughs> just don't have the voice. I just don't it. have the vocal. I just have the voice. Everything else is fine. It's just the vocal that's the issue. Oh, but did Ella pure love it? Yeah. Honestly, right. Ella is one of my favourite people ever, obviously, because she's my daughter, right? But she is actually a beautiful person, right? Mm-hmm. She's so empathic. I've never met anyone like her who's, she just takes on the energy of everything around her. So, like that, it's quite an overwhelming thing to go to a concert for the first time because everyone's like all shouting at the same time, all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. She was absolutely buzzing. And then when the musical came on and that kind of like, she did the thing of, um, they see the kind of like pre show video. It was her walking down like a corridor. Mm hmm. And then a big knuckle comes up on the screen, goes knock, 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 and then she comes on the stage. Kind yeah. of thing. She present- it was so good the way I they mean, did it. To be honest, it sounds a bit like our intro it's for like our show. show. I think she's probably at our show and maybe yeah. she just copied it. That's what yeah. happened. <laughs> but then Ella was like, that's your buzz and she's so happy. And then she did the wee quivering lip thing and then she burst out crying. Mm. She's oh. like, I'm just so happy I'm here. It was I honestly love that amazing. she cries a pure happy tears, I know. doesn't she? That is mm. so, so cute. Very cute. And it's so not like put on in any way. Like she, she actually can't help it. She just gets so excited. I don't cry a lot, but I always cry when I see Ella's crying reactions to things. Do you it's ever cry? Quivering lip. Only weirdly, right? Not not to real life stuff, but um, to like TV stuff. Not TV, maybe like TikToks, like a sad video on TikTok mm, or yeah. something like that. Somebody comes home and it's like a emotional reunion cry. Oh yeah, yeah. a wee puppy or something like that, and it's like a surprise puppy, like Ella's video last yeah. week. Cry, but something really bad in real life, probably not. <laughs> It's just dust. I don't have any tears. Sorry. I don't know so what it is. It's just steam. It's evaporating from my eyes. Just a bit of dust comes out and that's me. I feel no, like you're either a crier or you're not. Do you know what I loved last night though? See the amount of um, groups of pals all out together just having a great time. Mm-hmm. What was the it's age range? So varied. It was either young girls who were all pals together. I uh-huh. would say like, I'm saying young girls probably in their 20s, early yeah. 20s. Or it was then people like me with their eight, nine, ten year old yeah. kids. It was amazing though. 
really really good vibe I still remember my first concert and it was Steps at the SCCC oh, and I honestly I felt a million dollars I had a, a lemon a lemon <laughs> oh, lemon cord right and it was like I remember it was like higher up here right it was like a crop top uh huh um, quite similar to do you remember Rachel and Friends's um, like yellow dress that she wore that was yeah, a pure iconic set. that's what mine was like right so it was like yellow and then I had the capri pants oh stunning oh, oh my god was and it was, a Tammy it was from Tammy of course it was and I just I was like we were only like four rows for the front and it was steps and I was like I had the same thing the pure oh my god I can't believe it's them felt the quiver but yep. probably dust still <laughs> did you have on was it can I ask was it a cardigan you had on with it no it no a bolero no, no, it was just a, it was a cami top, but it was like structured like a kind of corset, and then the uh, capri pants. I feel like bottom. I can see it. Did it and it's floral. Did it have a square neck? Yes, and it was like florally it fitted at the bust. Uh, yeah, yep. I'm not being funny. I genuinely think I had this. Oh my god! See if I had photos of it, we could compare. Was it almost like that one where the flowers are like embroidered yes. into it? Really, I think I had that. Oh my god! Can you imagine? imagine. You two twins winning. <gasps> I don't have any photos. See, like early years, I have very little because I'm the youngest. Yard. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's a shame. It really is. And actually, the whole th- the history has repeated itself. Because see, when I look back now, I'm like, I have videos of like basically all my vlogs from every day of Oliver's life up until he was like five. But I kind of like tailed off and haven't got as much of Marcus. Sorry, Marcus. Ah, oh. oh, so like I don't have the equivalent for him. It's for quite. Sparks. It's quite a shame. That is a shame. I've got live photos. I can just put them all together. Yeah. I, know. And <laughs> I, love, the little, I love right. I love a live photo for the reason that you can obviously see the little clip of the video, but also. When it's clipped together in a montage, and all you see is the wee, like, the wee, the wee glitch, slit. the wee glitch of everyone. Yeah. So you get so much of the video, and then it glitches. It's annoying to watch. Have you ever had Google um, just be like, hi, here's a memory video for you? And then yes. you watch it through, and it'll be like really, really cute pictures of the kids, like just wee moments. And then suddenly you'll have like some like screenshot of something yeah. where it's, yeah. it's accidentally taken shopping something that's total uh-huh, shopping list. Yeah. <laughs> kind of ruins the moment uh-huh. a little bit, Google. Thanks. So close to crying there, Google, what you killed it. Hey, you almost got me there. We've got our lip blush today. I know, by the way, I I'm was feeling it, a bit weird. I feel same. tingly. It feels like a little bit um, stiff. I feel like my lips feel a bit stiff. Mine feel a bit sticky because there's so much stuff on them like I've sla- slathered yeah that's slathered that I don't them. like slabbered slathered and fleshy are words that I actually it scratches my brain in the wrong way fleshy yeah. is not fleshy but is you, a like murder mystery yeah. kind of word yeah, not slathered is perfect for Vaseline though yeah Even that's slather the Vaseline doing. Doing. so oh. we went to the eyebrow lady in Great Western Road yeah yes and all got a lip blush which like it is such a What's the word? Most perfect thing that you can ever get, I think. <laughs> <laughs> it really is. <laughs> See, why, other than... why does this feel like I mean? <laughs> it's just like, just like the most perfect thing you could ever get. <laughs> but it really is. Like, see that feeling of not having makeup on, right? Yeah. See if you've got your brows done, your lashes done, mm-hmm. and your lips are already the right colour. Yep. You're sorted. Well, particularly as you're you getting older, you, know. you lose the you lose the pigment in your lips. Yeah, yeah and it's it a lot starts from the outside yeah. and goes in. I looked at my before and after picture, and I was like, my lips are actually blue. Yeah, mine actually uh, looked yeah. really pale when I went in. But here's the thing: I think a lot of people think they need lip filler done. Yeah, when they actually just would be better off getting a little bit of pigmentation and the back into their, their lips. Do you know what I loved about her? She actually never did. It's not a case that you go in and go, can I get a number five, please? That's the colour I want. Mm-hmm. She's like, what colour do you like? What lipstick do you like? And you can pretty much tell her most of the like, more popular shades of lipstick. Mm-hmm. And she's like, oh, so it's like a more woody, rosy coloured pink. Mm-hmm. Yes, that's the one. And she'll mix it for you then and there and go, do you like that colour? So no two of us have actually got the same shades. No, me and Lauren no. are the same. Are we? Mm-hmm. Did you go exactly for the same as me? Yeah, because I said to her, I was like, I want like a velvet teddy. And she was like, Lawrence is actually quite close to that. And then I seen yours and I was like, yeah, go for that. Did you use my needle at all? I uh, probably. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we are similar. She said yours is a wee bit pinkier, I think. Mm, maybe. Yeah, um, I think you wear more pinky tones, especially. more. She wears more pink than us. Yeah. I, think. I feel like ours look different colours though. Yeah, your lip colour already is different. Yeah. So it's like your canvas is already a different shade yeah. from each other. Because I'm a spring and you're an autumn. Yeah. Yep. Spring, autumn, summer. We're, we're all different. We don't have a winter. No. See, the um, thing that I would quite like to do for the summer, right, is continuously have fake tan on. Yep. Mm-hmm. Instantly makes life easier. I've got right? tan all just on and I swear to God, my DMs have been 
popping. It's with so quick. it's so realistic. Do you not know think it looks like a real tan? Mm, absolutely. That is a tanologist medium mousse, so it's clear. It's not the one that you use. You use the the purple bottle, bottle. That's purple. the yeah. express one. The yeah. express one. This is just the medium mousse, which I think a lot of people will go oh, medium or light. That's not dark enough for me. I, I swear to God. I know because I've got the extra dark one and I look different to you. That the medium mousse is my go-to. I actually love it. I've been using it for years. The only thing is you can't see where you're putting it, but just put... You can bought, feel I can it feel the last thing. Slather it all on, like Lauren does very fast. I love the Express one. This isn't an ad, by the way. I, I love the Should Express be. one, but see, the, the best thing about it is putting it on at six o'clock at night, washing it off at 11 o'clock, and then you go to bed fresh. Oh, but all your nice... Oh, it's, it's the best. I hate sleeping in fake tan. Yeah, so see if you can wash it all off and then put on like a nice moisturiser and then you get into bed and you wake up in the morning and you're all tanned. And you don't have to have the thing of washing it off. Plus, I always feel like washing your tan off, it's always better the second shower. Yeah. Oh, 100% is. So see if you have the first shower at night time and then the second shower in the morning, it's perfect by the okay, morning. I'll give it a bash. So I'm going to stick to putting tan on mm-hmm. religiously. Um, and continue obviously with your laser hair. Continue with the laser hair. Yes, which I'm actually going next week for my sixth session. Yep. Hopefully that will... just do it everywhere? Yeah, everywhere. Apart from my arms. I wish I'd started doing Super my arms. exposing. Really, but I'm to over it. Get it done. No, no we, we have to, to be shave. shaved. Because see what happens is the the slightest wee dark. Like so, say for example, they were doing like my arms would be a nightmare because I've got so many freckles. Uh-huh. They would need to get a wee white pen and go over every one of yeah, those dark freckles. Be, yeah, oh, that's impossible. Sake. That is actually impossible for them to do that. Yeah, but you are. You look really freckly then, actually. I'm always freckly. I know, but I, I feel like you look. Fuck. I it's love freckles. Kind of as well. I'm always freckly. Always. This is always what I look like. I have Embrace super, it. Super freckly arms. You can actually go and get your freckles tattooed on it. I've seen yeah. this. People would pay a lot of money for people that. People would pay a lot of I've money for that. I've seen talk about tan. I've seen people that do the fake tan pen mm-hmm. freckles. Yep. So they dot them about their face, leave it, then wipe it off and it's like stain their face. Mm-hmm. I could not do that and make it look natural. No, well you could try it with the broccoli that people were doing. Yeah. Have you seen, seen that? that. What a trend. Or Maybe the face, the hair root spray. If you spray that far away, it does work, right? Because look, I have a couple of um, hair, like root spray freckles in my hand yes. just from when I put it on this Stand morning. They look like sunspots. Yeah, uh-huh. but it really <laughs> does. River spots. If you do it the right way, it looks like freckles. You yeah, just have, have to you, spray have it from afar. Have you seen people doing their full makeup and they go do that little spritz of the root spray? Because it's like, it almost looks a bit like a can of dry shampoo. Uh-huh. Yeah. And they do a little, ch- and then, but they spray it too much. And yeah. then that with their whole face just goes like brown. Yeah. It'll just be like a big splat in the middle, like it's been an accident, like they've been like paintballed. So perfect circle. Uh-huh. The problem Stunning. is when people do fake freckles, I think a lot of the time they they make them too symmetrical on either side. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Whereas need freckles just... need to be a wee bit all over the place. You can't have them just on your nose, they need to be everywhere. I have a lip freckles. I wonder if you'll be able to see it through the blush. Can you? Uh, yeah, I've, I've, you have got a li- I've got an eye freckle. An mm. eye freckle? Look, this one Oh, right yeah, here. I can see Where? it. That's what she does. She's got an eye freckle. Yeah. And my eye. And her actual eyeball. Right next and, to the and the, and the iris. Oh, I've got that is a few called... Oh, what's that called? Don't diagnose me with something, Lord. No, 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 because see, when we went to Amsterdam, <laughs> we, went to that, we went to that eye mazy. Mm-hmm. And obviously they look right in your eyes and like you get like you and your partner's eyes put together. And um, they'd asked if they could share mine on social media because my eyes have... So many freckles on them. Oh, really? Oh, really? Uh huh. What's it called? Is it a name? Oh, I like, didn't. I didn't research any that much. It freaks me out for a wee while because I was like, "Is that something dodgy?" I had to go get my eye test like a couple of weeks ago. I was seeing the notifications come through. I can't <laughs> see it. Oh, that was actually really embarrassing. Do I explain what happened? Yeah, I was just sitting with you and we were chatting, right? You know that way you just kind of like <laughs> <It's> too much. <laughs> the second hand embarrassment gives me a shiver down I have side. to always be basically always doing two things at once, right? So even just to to focus on the, the chat sometimes scrolling actually helps you focus so I was just multitasking listening to you guys chat booking an eye test <laughs> like <any laughs> and then the next middle, minute middle aged woman does <laughs> of course only because I've like convinced myself that the reason I've got so many floaters is because I'm losing my sight right oh my god explain what floaters are everyone knows what floaters no, are not everyone knows what floaters are I don't think so. Yep, floaters. I mean, you, you can be staring straight forward. I've got loads of them as well. You can be staring straight forward. I know my eyes are crossed now because I'm looking at one. <laughs> you can <laughs> Gatorade. <laughs> you can be staring straight forward and then you see the little black things and they kind of just like they move, move with your eyes. It's almost like they're on the outside of your eye and they're floating through the water of your eye. Yeah. So I feel like I've got a lot of them. So I was worried about that. Plus, I know for a fact that I need, I've need i needed glasses my whole life and I've just never wore them. Right. But then I was going, 
I need to get that checked just in case it's something dodgy. So I booked my eye test while we were chatting about work stuff and then next minute everyone gets a notification. <laughs> it's like, and Lauren was like, Ailey, did you just book an eye test? <laughs> <laughs> and it was because I, I, because we were talking about the podcast, I accidentally put down girlsoverheardpodcast at gmail.com. Which is really embarrassing because then when I went in to get it, That's the, the girl's like, it was like, can you just confirm your name and your date of birth and then your email is just girls over here podcast? I was like, yes, that's me. <laughs> and then what that's did she say? my work. I know. That's what it's like. I'm a podcaster, uh -huh. if you didn't already know. How embarrassing. Because that's me saying that. And she said, it's like, what is your podcast about? Uh-huh. And I, Well, she's like, oh, I've heard of that podcast. I was like, oh. That's it just looked so like funny. I was at, like subtly trying to ask her. Get her to ask me about it. Yes. Oh, ask me what that is. Really embarrassing. Ask me, ask Talking me. about um, eye tests, I think I need to book a hearing test. What was that like the other day at the park? Oh, this was actually... <laughs> I feel like I was actually bullying this it was, child because no, I was like deliberately mishearing him. It was basically like having like your really, really old grandpa <laughs> when you're shouting at them to tell them something and they just keep getting it wrong and it's just funny. Is that she was the her. Grandpa? She's me. the grandpa. This me. wee boy, right, the bit that I saw was the wee boy trying to show Ash something on, on his phone, right? And he had, like, a picture of him and his brother, I think. He just as... said, now I'm a pure Pied Piper. Like, this is a thing. Kids will just come up and start talking to me. Yeah. I don't know what it is. But this people so like, how are you liking to me? Because you make eye contact with him, me and Ailey, yeah. go away. This is like Mowbray. I mean, what age is he? Like, 10 or 11 or something? About 10, yeah. He was just chatting about me, showing me his phone. He's like, that's my brother. And I was like, oh, that's lovely. Like, your brother or whatever. And he said something about... It's, but by the way, the, the kids in the photo on this boy's screensaver, right, were probably like 11 and 12. Mm -hmm. And the wee boy went, he must have had something on his phone. And he went, oh, have you got a wipe? And Ash went, oh, he's got a wife. He looks awfully young. He have a wife. <laughs> see. I, was, I was like, what? Is, are you okay? <laughs> but he said his brother was 21. Uh -huh. So I went, what age is he? Is he older than you or younger? He, he probably didn't older. Say that. And I said... <laughs> <laughs> and I said, I said, oh my God, he looks about 12. He went, no, he's 21. Then next minute he said, has anyone got a wife? Because he's made his phone stick in. He's got a wife. He's awful young to have a wife. Even the way you said it was very grandpa. Oh, he's awfully young to have a wife. <laughs> and then, what was the next bit? <laughs> he wanted to play football. And the, both the guys were there, like Andy and Fra were both there. And he'd went over and said to them, to, like if basically they could do a 1v1 1v1 but the way he said it was weird he went can you play football with me can you do a 1v1 and I went what you when did someone play football uh -huh. the wee boy was just like <laughs> I, I don't know like, what to say to you it was so bad and he actually looked at me he was looking at me as if like are you trying to take the piss out of me and I genuinely wasn't but you genuinely did you I did. genuinely wasn't though you were trolling I wasn't, him I wasn't trying to I wasn't trying to my hearing has been so bad so bad. Maybe you're needing a wee syringe. Oh my god, have you seen people that have got these things on TikTok and it's like Can't. a Ugh. it's like a camera on mm -hmm. a, a thin little like probe. But they say you shouldn't do that. Like it's really bad. Yeah, you need to be like qualified to uh -huh. do that. If I had one of them, I know for a fact I would have a full addiction to it. I'd be going near all your ears. Yeah, but you can literally like, come here. You can burst, burst your drum. And a mm. burst your drum is not fun. Girls. I remember you had it. I had it as well. I remember I was deaf for, in one ear for ages. Yeah. It's Agony. Remember the time I was putting Charlie to his bed for like his wee nap in the afternoon? So he must have only been like 18 months or something like that, max. Mm -hmm. And I think he was actually, it was not long after we moved into the house. And I put him to bed and I lay him down and he'd fallen asleep. And I gave him a kiss in the cheek. And as I got up, his head was on the side and I could see directly into his ear. And I was like, what is that shiny thing in his ear? And it was a butterfly from the back of an earring and hit the whole of his ear. Do you remember that? that is kind of fear. do remember this, yeah. And then I was like, oh my God, I can't get that out. And then I went and get tweezers and I tried to get it out. I was like, I'm actually going to injure him because he's going to wake yeah. up. And then I'm basically going to stab him through the ear. So anyway, ended up when he woke up, I took him up to the hospital and they just put this wee tiny, thin probe thing in and it just like magnetically mm -hmm. pulled it out. Mm -hmm. And when I'd asked him, I was like, why was that in your ear? And he's like, I wear Ella's earrings. Oh my god! Been trying to get Ella's earrings. Just and chuck put them, them in there. I was like, I just fling them all in. I love that. Put them in the hole. How many more's in there, Charlie? I know. I once knew of a wee boy who there was a smell following him about for a long time, right? And people were like, I don't know why this wee boy's got this smell. And do you know what it was? It turned out he was putting rolling up wee bits of bread, yep. and putting them up his nose, and, and it was moldy bread. Which, if it smelled bad for other people, imagine what it smells like for him when it's up his blocked. nose. He's probably blocked his own nose. Oh. 
sent. That's what happened to Charlie, though. No, I, I took him to the hospital. I took him to the hospital once. Took him to the doctors four times. I was like, he has a stinking face. There's something smelly yep. on his nose. I think he's put something up there. No, no, we've checked, we've checked, blah, blah, blah. Eventually, I went back to the hospital. I was like, this was a month later by this point. Because mm-hmm. it's like an appointment a week. And I got ENT to come round and just have a right good look. I was like, there's 1,000% something up his nose. And eventually, I got a really good doctor. And they looked up and they were like, there's something there, but it's flesh coloured. So that's why it's been missed. Mm-hmm. And they literally went up. Like pure, basically as if he was being mummified, <laughs> went up his nose and pulled out this big, massive bit of bath sponge. Like oh he'd obviously God. been eating the, like a natural sponge in the bath. Yeah. He'd been eating the sponge, clearly, and I don't know if he's shoved it up his nose. Or, or it's been he's, in the water and he's and breathed he the water in. in. Or whatever, but it was like, see that way when it came out, it was as if it was vacuum packed <laughs> up his nose. Because <gasps> as it came out, it just expanded. It was massive. Oh my God. Right, follow up from last week's episodes. We have a couple of messages in. And last week we spoke about Victoria, Victoria Beckham and David Beckham kicking somebody yeah, out. Mm-hmm. Well, not actually kicking them out, requesting that they they don't have their wedding a specific day yes. in Glen Eagles. It's not true, guys. Ah, right. see, I had a feeling. <clears throat> this is the message that we got in. Hi, just listened to confession sessions. Oh, sorry, that was on confession sessions. If you don't know the story, we'll do a quick recap. Basically, the legend is, the story was that a girl had her wedding booked and Glen Eagles had kept going on and on at her, please change the date. And it turned out that it was because Victoria wanted to have her 50th there, was it? Yeah. And um, in order to get their wedding date, they paid their mortgage off. Glen Eagles offered to pay the mortgage off. How amazing is that? I mean, anyway, too so, good to be true, clearly. Yeah. It's a wee rumour slash urban legend that has been around for over 10 years. About several different wedding venues, but not true. My mum told me the same story a few months ago, but alas, a wee Google search shows that it's been doing the rounds for years. So sad, I was looking to book a hotel nearby for the weekend so I could accidentally bump into the Beckhams. And also, doesn't that make you think that see if that was the case? Surely you'd start stalking, like borderline stalking your favourite celebrities' best haunts, right? For around their birthday dates and be like, right, oh my God, it's Rio and Kate are having their anniversary soon and I'm going to book the suite of their favourite hotel. Yeah. So that whenever it comes, they're going to then say... I'll pay your mortgage. I'll pay off. your mortgage. Like you would do that, wouldn't you? You'd be going right. I'm just going to book a few things. And yeah, just pick everything uh-huh. well in advance as well, so you yep. don't pay deposits. Yep, perfect. Just to see what happens. Um, it comes to you need to pay it all. We also got another message um, based on the confession sessions title for this week. What did I put it on? Uh, your da wanks dugs. Yeah. See you somebody's just finding the podcast for the first time. Yeah, what's your cool. podcast? Like you always get that question. Oh, what's your podcast about? Uh, I dare you to see that titles to the, include your dad wanks dogs. the next time. <laughs> What's your podcast about? Your dad wanks dogs. It's just you never know. Like, have you ever had that? Somebody's like, oh my God, you got a podcast. What's it about? And you kind of go, it's just like chat and like yep. people write in confessions and then you're just in your head, you're mentally going, right, if they look that up when they get home, what are they going to see? Yeah, they're what gonna are see, the most recent ones? They're going to see the real me. Yeah, they're, they're going to see, see the real me. Unleashed. They're not going to see my like school mum face. They're not going to my see school mum personality. They're not going to see my school mum personality. They're not going to see no. me talking to the elderly members of the family personality. No. no, they're going to have the full unmasking. Yeah, it basically is the mass singer. Right, let's get into the DMs for let's this week. Do it. As let's always, do it. the number is oh seven four two eight. 957885. I just have to double check. You forgot check. that. A wee bit. Do you know, apparently, the number of numbers that you can remember in your head is. Oh, no, wait a minute. It's better than nine <laughs> digits. I mean, he's in a phone number. Nine. nine. No, there's do? not nine in a phone number. Ten? Oh, seven, four, two, eight, nine, five, seven, eight, eight, eleven. Oh, eleven. Uh-huh. So apparently, the maximum amount of digits is nine, and that's how phone numbers are so hard to remember. Oh, okay. Because they are 11 and it's a two additional digits. I remember I used to sit next to a girl and work um, and she, when we were all talking about like what your party trick was, mm-hmm. she was like, my party trick is I could, um, I can recite pi to nine decimal places. It was the most bizarre like party trick you've ever had. So she was like, it's um, 3.145, blah, blah, blah. And we were like, that's not impressive. That's a phone number. That's also, literally like knowing somebody's phone number. Yes, well, it's also not impressive because you could actually tell me any numbers. You yeah, could actually yeah, do anything yeah. and I'd go, sure. We know uh, it's 3.14. I can't take you. That's the only numbers you it, need it really to know in school. Matter. Plus, let's be fair. Has anybody ever used Pi? No. Since never. Life skill? No. Nope. And also what's quite funny is people like, remember obviously when we were at school, <coughs> sorry, it was kind of before the whole like phone becoming like the thing in your pocket permanently. Mm-hmm. It was almost like an optional thing. 
Oh, is that the hotline blank? Right. It is. Got a little, got a little voice, voice note. Oh god, I love that. But also, how much is it a pure ha ha moment, like Nelson moment, right? Yeah. To every teacher you ever had at school that was like, well, you're not going to have a permanent calculator all the time on the go. Yep. You're an adult. Well, fuck you. Yes, I do. Yeah. Watch and it's me. literally here right now and I don't even need to. Which, I don't even you know need what? to have a habit. No. It's mad because if you think about it, even when we were in school and they used to say that, my phone back then had a calculator on yeah. it. So maybe shifty your watch, your watch has a calculator. Yeah. Literally anything that we ever learned we don't actually need because now we have chat GPT. Uh-huh. We, we can, can just... just we can ask him anything. Ask, yeah. What were we talking How, about the other day? It's a man. <laughs> it, to me, it's a man. And he's one of my That's besties. That's so sexist, man. Why, do, why is it a guy? I just feel like he's quite masculine. I don't oh. know. No, I think mine's a girl. Maybe right. Maybe it is sexist. Oh, my God. In your brain, you've like got that programmed that that means that it would be a man that would know Right, okay. I'm going to have to reprogram it. And... Oh, look at me, the wee feminist. That's <laughs> it. Love um, that for me. Do you know who's a GPT? pure feminist? You know? <laughs> Hello, my fae. Have you seen that? I think she did with Jamie Lang. No. Right, so he's got this new podcast called something like... Hey, podcast is He's got a lot, lot, by the way. Got, I'm doing my new podcast. Podcast. Pod- Pinky. Oh, is this Pinky. the one where he sits naked on the horse? Yeah. Yeah. I'm promoting my new podcast. Um, he's got one that's something like, like, I can't remember what the name of it is. It's something like Real Conversations or something like that. Real Talk or something like that. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's just, there's no subject matter to it apart from just having a really good chats with like interesting people, right? So he had Paloma Faith on it. And did mm-hmm. you see what she said? They were like, he said something like, right... Paloma, what turns you on? Weird question for a oh, married guy. Yeah, I thought, yeah. isn't it? Right, but whatever it is, Jamie, There's he gets some... away with it because I think he really does. Play he's got a bit of the kind of feminine touch to him. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I feel like he's one of those guys that literally could have a girl best friend and you'd go, I bet it's Jamie. Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. Exactly. There's exactly. no chance that's going to. Do you know what I mean? Anyway, so he said to her, like, what turns you on? And she went, guys that realise that foreplay actually starts like all through the day and not just in the bedroom. You don't just lick your fingers and rub. Uh huh. <laughs> She's thought of that answer before. She's definitely said that it's before. It's the way she smiles. You don't just spit in your fingers, fingers and rub. Uh-huh. Here, here. And she's giving her hands and teeth. And even Jamie that like is so open with stuff like that is like, oh, okay, wow. well done. He was going, that is going to make an no amazing teeth. TikTok. Why yep. is that, by the way, that some guys have that about them that you're like, I'm not, not threatening whatsoever. Safe space. Yeah, why is that? Because I would I absolutely know. get that with Jamie. Yeah. There's like guys that I can think of in life that like you just don't, Worry about being, they're just not a threat. Like seedy, maybe. Yeah, like I, so... I don't know. I kind of get that with Fraser though. Like Fraser could have girl pals, and I wouldn't be going. Yeah. Why is he get pure pal with her? Because he's got a couple of girl pals that he's like working with and all that. And yeah. I would never once go, "Oh my god, just why is he?" Aha, uh-huh, never in a million years. I don't feel threatened. It's a, uh-huh. it's, a, it's an unconscious thing that we must have like in our brains because everyone would have the same with Jamie Lang, I think. And also a wee bit, um, Sam Thompson. Yes, he has absolutely. That. He has that. Is it just like a general happy, nice person? It's the Maybe. golden retriever yeah. energy. Is it? It's because they're not trying to be like dark and mysterious. They're not trying to be sexy. Yep. Yeah. Maybe that's, that's what, what it is. is. Here, nothing more unflattering than a guy trying to act sexy. Yeah. I literally like wince at the thought. Like, see, even like calendar boys, all that stuff. I'm like, Ugh. Ugh. yeah. Anyway, talking talking shite. So let's go back talking into the shite. the chat, right? So. Hey, I was watching the podcast and on the topic of nicknames, my group of friends have a nickname for a random woman who lives in the area. It isn't the best, it's actually a bit shite, but that is the whole reason why it works. Yeah, if they're, if they're bad, they're good. They specifically need to be like a wee bit crap. Mm-hmm. Almost a bit like a dad joke. Yeah, right? yeah. Yep. So her nickname is Tummy Rubs. You're, you're icking out at Tummy, aren't you? Oh, I don't like Tummy. This nickname was given to a woman who still, to this day, goes into the shop, goes to the reduced section and rubs the sweets on her stomach, then puts them back down again, which I think shouldn't be allowed. No, it shouldn't be allowed. What do you mean? She still does that as if everyone has Is had it like that? she's pretending to ingest them? Like, yeah, oh, is she making love these smarties, mm, but I'm not going to actually eat them or buy them? I'm just going maybe to put them she, close to the stomach yeah, area. Yeah, maybe this is actually a wee... Um, a wee tactic, a wee weight loss tactic. You know when they say like, don't actually eat the chocolate, just sniff it. You get the same endorphins. Maybe she's Do been told. You fuck. Maybe she's been told, you know, see those sweets you like, just go up, rub them in your stomach, and pretend they went in, and then you won't have to buy you them. Don't get to very it's like a little sweets like that. I know. I can imagine all the wee squashies in the bag and going, we don't want to be rubbed in the stomach. <laughs> and also, I would hate if I went in to buy something and didn't know that it had previously been rubbed in her stomach. 
Which makes me think about everything then that I then purchase in a shop that's yeah. on an open forum. Yeah, 100%. For example, clothing. How did I know that nobody's tried this dress on before me and they weren't stinking? What, oh, they had no not, pants on? It's not even a dress, it's like trousers and stuff. Yeah. Writing this in real, real time, what does that mean? Oh, real, real time. But like what other time would you be writing it in? Like, like, like as it's a story that's happened. Like, oh, right, two, okay. Like two years ago or okay. something. So why did you look like physically um, like worried about getting that out there quickly? I don't know. I was because just, it's hot off the press. Yeah, I just didn't understand the writing this in real time because I'm like, aren't we always writing in real time? No, real, no. real time. Real time right. was today. I'm on holiday just now with my partner of a year. We must have fallen asleep mid-afternoon and I've just risen. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Jesus. He has risen. <laughs> it's Easter already. <laughs> He's still asleep, so jump at the chance to do a shite. Oh. <laughs> You're down the line, still get shite fright. Oh my God, it's got a name. Shite fright. <laughs> 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 only farted in front of him once whole other story by the way by okay. accident probably okay yeah. so stumble into the toilet do my business scrolling on tiktok as you do something felt a bit strange but put it down to being in a foreign toilet no just no turns out i shat in the fucking bidet oh, bidet the bidet bidet to make things actual worse how could you get that mixed up a Very toilet low down as well I mean, there's all different shapes and sizes. They don't... Okay. To make things worse, I was sat looking at the actual toilet. You know, the one with a <laughs> flush and a seat. There. For the past 10 minutes, he'll never have to know. Shite has now been disposed of via appropriate channels. However, I'm fucking mortified. Please side note, there's clearly poly bags attached to the wall, kind of similar to a dog shit bag. Got a funny feeling I've not been the first person to make this mistake. Incredibly humbled that I had to pick my own shit up like an animal. <laughs> I genuinely cannot imagine how you could confuse the two. No, you couldn't. At one least she like clean little, it. One looks like a little sink. Uh, by the way, uh, see the idea. The ones. idea of that is actually gross. She's you know, obviously do hovered. You know, do you know a really funny story, right? I feel like I'm throwing my dad under the bus here, right? Oh, go on then. Dad likes to be thrown under. But um, when my mum and dad were on holiday and they were staying with, it was them and their pals, and they were away. And he was, my mum hates toilet humour, like anything to do with poos, farts, peas, anything like that, she hates it. And um, my she dad- love this podcast. My dad shouted it in one day and he was, he wasn't like, he, he, he was fully clothed, right? But he was like making remarks about him washing his arse in the beanie, right? <laughs> anyway, he squatted too low and put his back in. <laughs> <laughs> And he was in his bed for the full holiday. Literally unable to move. Slip disc. Like, slip disc. My dad has a really bad back <laughs> and squatted down thinking it was going to be really, really funny and ruined his full holiday. Oh, he was I in his like, bed. Was he in the position as well? I feel like he would have just stayed in that position yeah. and just had to be lifted up <laughs> and put And it was through. quite literally that thing of like, can't get out of your bed to pee. So you've got bottles beside you. Jan is running in with rubber gloves disposing of said bottles. <laughs> Oh, that's really... That's it was awful. awful. Absolutely awful. So BDs are not safe. So yeah, she must have been sat quite low. In my mind, it's like, you know, when you go to primary school and everything's tiny and you're yes. like, how on earth the toilets are like literally minuscule, like yeah. little tiny yeah. toilets. In my head, she's basically like Buddy the Elf. And the knees are up pure high, a bit like a spider's legs. It's the way she's <laughs> staring at the toilet all Hunching. I actually have a horrible um, PTSD moment with... B days is it B day? I feel like I'm getting the whole French thing, and I'm scared to say I it. Thought wrong. it was B day. Is it B day? I don't. I call it B day. Right, because my association with that is when I was younger, being the youngest child, I was the bully victim. Right, obviously uh -huh. my brother and my She's sister used to take. This twice today, I, know, I feel I like you're having some no. like flashbacks. No, right? um, my brother and my sister used to take the piss out of me. Obviously, I was the one that they would. I was the butt of the joke. Right, no pun intended. And uh, I remember going on holiday, and then. For some, I pure remember it actually, right? I remember them being like, Ailey, come in here, we're getting ready. And I had to wash my face, right? Everyone was apparently had washed their face and I was to wash my face. And then as soon as I washed my face, they ran out and they were like, Ailey's washed her face in the butt wash. The oh. butt wash. <laughs> Ailey. And the, yeah, they were slagging me the whole holiday that I used the butt wash for my face. Oh. Listen, I'm do you know why they have them on holiday? Why? Because everybody gets far too drunk on holiday. Because see, what mind when we went to Lanzarote, all of us and we all got absolutely smashed yes. that time. I think I was being sick in the toilet mm -hmm. and Chris was being sick in the bidet. 
So we needed those two. Yeah, that's not why they have them, though. They have them so you can wash your arse. I know. Because they don't why? like toilet paper abroad. I think because a lot of the time... Yeah, they don't. It, actually, they don't like to flush right. toilet paper, so they just wash. Well, is it not like use grease, the like you're not allowed to flush anything like that? You need to literally wipe Vile. and then bin. Because there's nothing worse than going into like, a public toilet and there's a that's big horrific. bin of used toilet paper in the <clears> heat. That's gross. Okay, my six-year-old son is calling the dandelion clocks on the grass. Dandelion clocks? Yeah, my mum says that as well. Stop dandelion a second. Cl- what? Is that because you call one o'clock, two o'clock, three o'clock? There used to be a wee, yeah. a wee rhyme about that, didn't there? That's, the, a, wee, that's a wee flashback. It's a, it's, my mum says that as well. I've never understood that. Dandelion clocks? They're just called dandelions. All right, okay. So this is obviously when they go into the wee wishes. I call it a wish. Mm-hmm. And you blow them. Oh, a wish. A wish, I call right? It, yeah. So my six-year-old son is calling the dandelion clocks on the grass near his school blowies. (laughs) I keep cringing every time he excitedly (laughs) tells me, Mom, look, I've got three blowies. (laughs) Or says to his brother, come on, Noah, let's go and get blowies before school. (laughs) The mum's like, please stop (laughs) saying that. And also the fact he's calling them dandelion clocks. You know that that could be misheard. Yeah, 100%. Dandelion Cox is coming. Cox and Blowies. Cox and Blowies. And you can't Cox even you can't even correct it because how you, you, can, you can't explain it. You can't no. explain why that's a bad word. Do you know what? Right, this, I've got a really good example of this. This is just a personal one. So th- that thing of like kids don't know bad words are bad words, even when it's not an actual swear word. Mm-hmm. Blowies being one of them, right? Another word, pussy. Oh, right. We talk about pussy cats, right? Do you know that Fra's mum? Had a big, lovely pussy cat, and she called it Pussy. <gasps> no, and nobody said to her. Maybe pick a different name. So she had a cat called Pussy. No, yeah, but my think God. about it though. Women used to be called Fanny back in the day. So, like times how long? Granny's a Fanny. <laughs> yeah, mum's a, a Fanny. So how long ago was a this? Big family of Fanny's. Fifteen. Does she acknowledge now that it's not? Oh, she acknowledges it. Right. But then here's the best part. Right. There's clearly a bit of like a family history of this. Her gran had, I'm sure it was a Pomeranian. What do you think that dog was called? Um, Pom? Suki. Oh. Suki and Pussy. Suki and Pussy, the family pets. Oh my God. I I love that. I know, but Suki doesn't sound as bad because you know that it's spelled S-U-K-I. It would be different if it was S-O-O-K-I-E. It was. Was it Suki, Suki? It was. (laughs) Suki. It was Suki. Suki and Pussy. Illegal. No. That's the worst. I'm going to say up there in the list of names for animals, they're the two worst ones you could have picked. I'm going to say Pussy is probably one of the worst words. I and would say it's the worst she, word in the world. Fondly, pussy, yeah. She fondly talks about Pussy. Can you just call her Puss, please? Yeah, please rename her. Puss, Puss. <laughs> She'll say, when I used to have Pussy, blah, 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 <laughs> and I'm like, the way you describe that. What are you talking about? When <laughs> I used to get Pussy... <laughs> <laughs> a treat from the cupboard. Yeah. Like, oh, okay. uh-huh. The pausing in the sentences is really not, it's not doing much. We need right. to know, has anyone got any funny names for animals? Because I bet there's loads out there. Oh, 100%. A little call out for that. Names that you called your pets and didn't realise how bad they were. You know, I heard older. a story about a goldfish recently that lived till it was 41. La- well, I, listen. Right, is this a mum and a dad that have just done the, the live really, so. really well? I thought so, but apparently not. And then the person who was talking about it, it was on another podcast, the, the goldfish lived till it was 41. And somebody else was like, I basically thought I had the oldest living goldfish because it had lived for 11 years. And then obviously researched it and the, the most, the oldest, not the most, the oldest like recorded age for a goldfish was 41. Listen, my gran had a goldfish and he was called Patrick and he lived for years and years and then she died and we had Patrick still to deal with. So my dad thought... Right, he's huge now. We'll just fling him in with the other, and he died. But he was like oh. fifteen. Oh. Patrick was a Patrick was fifteen. Patrick was an old boy. Honestly, he wow. he he had lived through every budgie that my granddad had. My dad flung him in with a koi cart. Shark, he was, he was, basically, of shark yes. Him. He was like, I could be fine. Hunger Games. Oh, Hunger Games. Oh, I feel really bad for me, Patrick. Poor I could just Patrick. imagine being like wee Nemo going into the tank, being hey like, guys, hey Patrick, guys. Uh, nice that was to meet you. Humph. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean the carp were like, num, num, num. Big. like they were huge. Did you ever see those fish? Yeah, they were massive. Absolutely massive. Wait, they were in your garden? Yeah. 
What? Uh-huh. They put he put Patrick the goldfish. He put Patrick the the domesticated animal and the wild and, and into the wild. wild. Yeah, and the jungle and the ju- and it literally was a jungle with the lily pads and everything like that. And he was food. He Patrick was food. Was food. And How then, were you ever expecting that fish to survive? I don't know. He was a big boy. We thought he would be okay. Patrick, I know. That Patrick, Patrick shook me by the way. Remember, you got a um, load of fish. And then you got Snoop Frog. Snoop Frog, he Aww. was cute. He didn't last too long. Oh. Do you remember I had tadpoles in lockdown because that was a pure lockdown activity that mm-hmm. everyone had. And I got really attached to them quite quickly once they developed those little back legs. I was like, oh, cute. look at them. And I was one day eating my um, chicken and rice soup. Again, another lockdown trend. And I was like, I bet they would love a wee bit of this. So I put some of it in. I know it wasn't my most clever moment, to be honest. Like, what? What, what were you that? thinking? I, I, I don't know. Clearly, I was depressed. They eat. I was really using these you tadpoles. Fed a fish soup. They were they were an emotional crutch for me. Girls, you fed them another missing. animal. I know it wasn't great. I feel like they're vegetarian. And the thing is, they I like, are. I like my soup salty. <laughs> So, uh, so you killed them, you dehydrated them even though they live in water? I, I think I, I put the sodium balance off in the water. What the fuck? And I went in and they were all just like this. And, I, and I was so, I genuinely, I was so upset and I was going, the kids are going to hate me. What have I, what have I done? And then I basically had to put out a plea on my local mm-hmm. community Facebook page saying, don't, hi, don't say you admitted to that. killed the tadpoles. Oh, sh- Never told them about the soup thing. I'm just telling everyone on here about the soup <laughs> thing. Killed the tadpoles. <laughs> Thanks, sun's crying now. <laughs> Does anyone know where I can get some tadpoles who have already got their legs immediately? Specific, this... specific type of tadpole. Yeah. I'm looking for teenage tadpoles. Yep. Don't be bringing me the ones that are still in the wee mm-hmm. eggs. We're, we're looking for spawn. I want them with legs. Anyway, this woman came up to my door. She was like the wee girl out of Finding Nemo mm-hmm. that gets the braces. She was like, hi, got you some tadpoles. And she brought them in a bag and I put them in the tank and I learned my lesson. I love, we used to have them in my... And my mum and dad's, and then the wee frogs would jump out, but then oh, they were so small, they were tiny. But then, see, when it was really, really sunny, and then the wee frogs are super, super, super tiny, they would hop too far away from the pond, and then you would find them literally burnt into the like paving stones. So it would just be these little crispy baby frogs because they'd obviously just like overheated oh, and so dried much. out. I've saved them from that. Well, not really, you killed them, you them a soup, but yes. <laughs> It was their death row meal. <laughs> it was their death row meal. Don't know if they would have chosen everyone it. I think they would have liked some algae. Everyone has their traumatic childhood pet story. And that's mine. Except you would have grown up. Yeah. <laughs> that was Ella's. <laughs> she just doesn't know about it yet. <laughs> she will soon. Imagine that. By the way, I fed them soup. That was why they died. No, but it's a good life lesson to learn. They just don't like it. Oh, my God. No, it's um, not they don't like it. They can't tolerate it. <laughs> my cat ate my hamster. I actually think that happened a couple of times. <laughs> my cat ate my hamster. <laughs> I think it happened That's a couple really of times. Awful. How did the cat get into the hamster? Because we're cleaning the hamster's cage. And I think we used to put it in the ball and how like they're running about yeah. ball. Put it in that and then we're cleaning the cage and whatever happened, turned around and the cat had the hamster in its mouth. Dead. Oh, of course it's dead. I actually think it ate both of them because I think we had two hamsters. Hamsters stink. You should never have a hamster and a cat because it's just a bad combo, really. Of course, it's literally the, the whole plot of Tom and Jerry. Yeah. yeah. Is it not? And I think it was the same <laughs> cat that actually once went home from school early and found him lying in my bed with like his tail as one piece of bloody string and a car had ran over his tail and flattened his tail and then he'd ran home and lay on my bed in my Lion King bedspread. We're not and... going to fucking feel sorry for the cunt. Oh. <laughs> cat, <laughs> cats eat mice. She just and... seaworded your cat. I know, but it was a domesticated animal. Also, it feels weird that you seed her... Never mind. Don't. <laughs> what were you? <laughs> Don't you dare. I can't did your fancy. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was going to say. <laughs> There's the title sorted for next week. <laughs> Right, will we do one more and we'll head over? Sure. Yes, it. Right. Morning pals listening into Ailey's rant about Lucy Watson. Hans. And one I know, that's cute, isn't it? A hundred percent agree. I have a fourteen week old lovely wee baby boy when and when he was twelve weeks old, I had a planned spa night away to a spa for my thirtieth, carried over from January because I was prego. Then the weekend after my younger sister watched him for four hours to allow my husband and I to go out for a couple of drinks. My older sister was livid and started telling other family members about how I never have my baby. Oh, I never twice. No and couldn't be coping. Must not be coping with new mum life. What? Because she's in a night away. There's a few things wrong with this, but I think the main issue with it is that the ideology that when you become a mum, your life ends, friendships end, and you're now only allowed to hang out with your baby, and any time away from your baby is frowned upon. Think people with that mindset need to grow up. Also, love that I'm sending you guys this rather than 
taken it up with my older sister. <laughs> Shite bag. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what though? You're probably better doing that. Uh-huh. Yeah. It's never going to end well with her. Why is that? People just have this whole like, you've got to impart guilt on you. Yeah. For I know. one reason. But it wouldn't be the same for the guy. And I've always said it. See the whole thing of like, the guy going out to wet the baby's heads. Yeah. Uh-huh. Why? Why is that? Why do you get to go out and celebrate? But if the mum was to do that, it would be like, oh my God, I can't I know. believe she's leaving her but baby. you're right, by the way. It's so unfair. We can't leave our baby. Fucking, you're ripped from front to back. Oh, or no. You're stitched from side to but side. But if or... you get left on your own while your husband goes out to like party and celebrate the baby and you're like, okay, I'll just look after it myself. It's madness. Absolute madness. Can't pee it's yet, weird, but It's thanks. weird how we have all these like, ma- like massively opposing parallels don't we yeah, like yeah. it's actually crazy even the whole like I love to see a dad pushing a pram do you what? say that about do you say that about women uh huh mm-hmm. I love to see women pushing a pram like yeah. what does that even mean they were just setting a standard that guys are meant to just not be involved I know I know and when they are involved mad. they need to get so much praise like that's their kid too yeah this is not like Victorian times absolutely not I know the whole thing like oh my god the dad's got the, the kids for the day that's so good you get a day off like it's not the other way around though yeah exactly like it's never the other way around it's so frustrating we yeah. need to change it we need to it do... did change it changed the moment the minute and hour that we got rights to work as well yeah that is when it should have changed but yeah. this is where you need to do the wee microfeminism thing have you seen this what? Where people say that you have to like just slightly change how we talk to to like change that narrative that it's always the girls that are in charge and it's always the girls that are like parent number one, the default parent. Yeah. So you're supposed to like, it's not even just when it comes to parenting, right? But it'll be things like if, and I, I fucked this up at the start because I said, I assumed chat GBT was male, right? Mm-hmm. But it's things like if someone was to say, I spoke to my doctor about blah, blah, blah. You go, okay, what did she say? Rather than assuming it's always a guy, yeah, yeah, yeah. always assume it's a girl. And then another one that people have been saying is that when you've got a baby and somebody comes to visit your baby, instead of immediately going to the girl and being like, do you want a hold? Pick the guy and get the guy to have a hold as well yeah. to make it equal because you're like kind of tuned in to always go to the girl first. Mm-hmm. But we need to balance it out. We do need to balance we do. Microfeminism is how cute. Oh, wait, it's such a nice phrase. What are you I doing? I'm just doing some microfeminism. <laughs> That's what I plan to do. Right, let's go over to confession sessions. If you want to join in, click the link below and we will have an extra episode out on Wednesday for you. Catch up on all the old ones if you're new as well, which is always a fun marathon. Oh, there's loads. Mm -hmm. There's There's loads in there. There's loads. So we'll see you over there. Thanks for listening. Bye. Bye. Bye.